Okay, um, Tanya Dastris has worked for IT in more than 11 years, all of which have been in Apple support. Um, she started providing Tier 1 Apple Care support, um, worked as an Apple technician at RMIT for nine years, and now works at Seek as an Apple Systems Administrator. Um, Tanya was a technical lead at RMIT for the MacWorks project, with the task of designing and implementing a managed operating environment for over 12,000 unmanaged machines. Tanya's a wannabe programmer and will search for any excuse to use Swift at work. In her spare time, she's working on an iOS app that helps techs carry out small talk at tech conferences. And this is Tanya's second time presenting at Xworld. So Tanya will be presenting Trigger, a splash screen utility. Thanks, Tanya. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, OK, so my name's Tanya. I, as Marcus said, I uh, work at Seek. And I created a utility called Trigger, which I want to show you guys today. So how did Trigger come about? It came about because I was looking for something to help me create a splash screen during that, that DEP workflow. So I wanted something that would um, present the user with some information about what was getting set up or installed on their Mac. It needed to easily integrate with some, some custom triggers because really most of my um, Mac setup is just calling custom triggers. It needed to have flexible design, so I wanted something that I could um, maybe have, you know, some, some, some fancy CSS or just some, some colours and, um, and, and the flexibility of, of adjusting it. And interactivity. So I wanted to be able to maybe ask the customer for location information so that uh, supporting the Mac in the future it would be easier. So I looked at some tools that are already out there. Um, uh, Jamp Helper, Coco Dialog, Splash Buddy, Pursuer, they all sort of tick the boxes for some of these three uh, features, but not all three. And so that's where Trigger came about. And mostly also I just wanted to practice my Swift coding. But that was also why I did it. So the, at the very basic level, what Trigger is, is it, it's a command line app that you uh, can put in a location, such as user local in, in, in this case, and you tell it to present a web view while simultaneously executing a command. And so that web view command pair can then be, will be, once that finishes, once the command finishes, it jumps to the next web view command pair, so on and so forth. Uh, and then some additional extra options like full screen or the width and height that you want the web view to be presented. So I'm going to go through and, and show you um, examples of this. So what's a web view? A web view is either a HTML document or string. So you just um, put in the HTML string in there. And you can reference externally hosted uh, images or files. So I do this with, um, with the way that I've got it set up at, at Seek and at RMIT using uh, hosted images and hosted uh, CSS files. Just because I like the idea of just being able to make adjustments on the fly and not really needing to redeploy any of the, any of the files. So what's a command? A command can be any Jamf or shell command and is declared immediately following the web view. So as you can see, I've got a policy trigger Microsoft Office. I'm not saying that it's a Jamf command. Uh, I'm, the trigger just can detect that it's a Jamf verb and will fill in the gaps for you as long as you've put the Jamf binary in the, in the um, default location. If you haven't, for whatever reason, you've got it in a different place, then you just need to specify the full path for the Jamf binary. Um, which means that you can do something like present a HTML document, a, a, a web view, uh, and just have the command as the simple word recon. Trigger now has also the ability to um, just uh, have a script run as the command or have another shell script, uh, shell command. There are some additional options as I, as I mentioned. So width and height, 
uh, by default, it's 345 by 305. I don't know why. I think I just chose something that looked particularly good on the display that I was working on at the time. Uh, you can have a title bar with a title. Uh, full screen mode uh, removes the title bar and also prevents the user from being able to exit out of the trigger process. So, which, which was what I was looking for during that, that setup uh, splash screen. I didn't want to make it easy for a user to be able to maybe try to run an application that hadn't installed fully yet or log out, etc. So full screen mode pretty much disables everything. The only way that you can exit out is by using the shortcut keys to log out or a, a hard um, shutdown of the machine. And there's also blurry mode. And so that's what that does is it uh, can't be used in conjunction with full screen. It uh, puts a blurry, an opaque overlay behind the web view. So now for a, a demonstration of, of how it works. So in this one here, what I've got here is I'm calling trigger. So I've, I've put it in user local and I'm specifying a HTML string, which is really just, I'm pointing to an, uh, a web hosted GIF. Uh, and I'm saying that the command to run is just a sleep eight. So present the web view for eight seconds and then, and then that's it, do nothing else. Uh, I'm giving it some uh, width and height, and I'm giving it a title. And then that's... It's a particularly funny scene. And then... In this example here, I'm pointing uh, again to a, to a GIF, and I've got uh, blurry enabled. That's also a particularly funny scene from Broad City. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can run instead of a Jamf command or just sleep five or, or whatever, you can also call a script. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a super, super, super basic script and call it important script. And let's just put it in the temp folder. And I will. All this script is going to do is just create a folder. Let's put it in ten. Sorry, Tony, what I did was I clicked stop on the recording <laughs> instead of escaping out these touch bars. That's all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, oh, no, it is still recording. Awesome. Sorry. Okay, so what we're, we're just going to make it um, executable. Excellent. So we've got the script that does this really basic thing. Now, I'm just going to show you the web view that I'm going to present. I've got this one here, slack.html. Fairly straightforward. All it is is it's saying here it's going to have a wheel GIF to indicate to the user that something's happening just so that they know that the, that the process hasn't frozen, that there is actually um, something being installed. And it's going to be next to the word Slack. And then I'm going to have a Citrix receiver HTML, same thing. I'm going to have the, the wheel GIF next to the word Citrix receiver. Cool. 
So I'm going to call trigger. I'm going to make it full screen. I'm going to have the first web view be slack.html. I'm going to make the first the command to execute while displaying that web view be a policy trigger. Then once that's done, it's going to jump to the second web view, which is Citrix receiver, and it's going to execute the important script. Oh, sorry. Got to run it from the location that I'm... I could have specified the full path of slack.html in, in that example. Um, okay, that was really quick. What I should have done is in the important script done a sleep five, just because a lot of these commands are incredibly fast when they run. Um, but hopefully you would have gotten the idea. But just in case you didn't, let's... That's a lot better. Cool. So you would notice that the, the important script um, script would have done its job. It would have created, there we go, in temp, a folder called folder. But the Slack policy would have failed because I don't have an externally hosted JSS and so it would have attempted it and failed. So this is where um, I realised that it was quite important to get feedback, to provide some, some status um, feedback to the, to the user. So I um, added a, a flag called output. So you can specify where you want the output of each command to be written to. So in this case, it would get written to a HTML document called setup output. It doesn't, um, it doesn't write the result of each command, just because I thought in some scenarios you might have a command where it is just sort of like a sleep five or just waiting there doing nothing. You don't necessarily want to give the users um, a superfluous, successful results. Uh, you just really want to give them meaningful data. So, if you want a command to have its um, results written to the output file, then what you do is you specify a command name. So in this case, if I run this as a command and Microsoft Office was a success, then the output file would have in green, Microsoft um, Office success, or in red, Microsoft Office failure with all the standard um, output uh, text that comes along with it. So what you do with that HTML file is that you can embed it into one of your web views. So that means, and that's just a, a basic HTML tag that you add to whichever web views you want to um, be presenting the, the results to. So let's have a look at an example of this. Okay, so I'm specifying here, write the uh, results to output.html and I'm just going to change that script name. Cool. So what I've done to um, the Citrix receiver HTML file is I've just added that output um, uh, uh, the, the object tag with output.html is what it's going to look at. Oh, and it also won't let you uh, overwrite a, a HTML file that already exists. So what we're going to do is... There you go. 
And now you can see here that I've got a finish button. What that does is it's going to quit out of the um, trigger process, regardless of how many web view uh, command pairs that I've got left in the, uh, in the chain. Which leads me on to the next feature of trigger, which is special links, special trigger links. So within a uh, web view, you can have, you can re refer to any one of those three uh, special links and uh, just for, for a little bit more, um, I guess, fun functionality. So uh, uh, that finish button, as an example, was just a link to quit. Uh, and so it'll jump out regardless of how many web view commands you've got left in the chain. If you are linking to next, then it'll jump to the next web view command pair. So this is a good one to have at the very start. So you could have that initial splash screen that just says, hey, you're about to set start the you know, setup process, click next to proceed, or press cancel to, um, to, to, uh, to cancel. And then the third one is form pass. And this is where that interactivity uh, comes in. So what it does is you click form pass and trigger will scan the web view for any form values that are in the, um, that the user has entered and then print it out to standard output. What this means is that your script can then pass, grab that, those, those values and maybe um, call trigger again and do some, and so as a result of what they've ticked, maybe they want some additional apps. Uh, so you can then call some custom triggers again um, as a result of, what they've, of the particular apps they've chosen. And so what you can do is you can have the, a web view with the, one of the special links in there and the command is just wait. So that's a, sp uh, a special trigger command uh, which means that it's just going to present the web view until the user clicks on one of, one of the uh, special links. So I have here Pretty, uh, once again, basic web view or HTML document. Uh, what it's got is it has an embedded uh, video in there and a button that is, just has next. And this button links to that special next um, link. And then what I want it to do is jump to another web view which is going to have a form, so checkboxes for additional apps that the user may want to install. And at the very bottom, there's going to be a button to cancel, so to quit out of the process altogether, or to proceed with the form pass. So here we go. I think that um, when I have, so a trigger's being used at the moment at RMIT and also at Seek, just in its initial, um, in the initial stage. And I think that at the moment, the, the, it's still the tech that's doing the Mac setup, right? So there's still um, some, some, some tech uh, intervention, I, I would call it. But really, the, the end game for me is to have a machine, have the unboxing, uh, unboxing experience completely done by the customer. And I think that what that means is that a lot of effort needs to be placed into what that onboarding experience looks like. And Trigger has the ability to embed video, so you could have things like, you could have, you know, um, on the right-hand side, all, these, all this software that's getting installed, but in the meantime, not only is the customer aware of the progress of that, those installations, but maybe they might have some, some videos on how to use Slack at, you know, at Acme Incorporated. So you click Next, and it proceeds to the next web view. At this point, you can either finish or install. And so in this case, we're just gonna tick on EndNote and VMware. And as you can see there, 
it's told us exactly what the user has selected. So, brings me on to what can you do with this information? So what can you do with that standard output data? What I have here is I have the trigger command being called and the last web view is that extra apps um, HTML file and then I'm just going through each line of the result and based on what the um, based on what the, the 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 string is of the result I'm generating a new HTML document on the fly which has the name of the application and just that that wheel gif to give the user an, an indication that that the installation is is happening um, and so this I've made um, available uh, on my website, so ten, I'll, I'll show the link at the, at the end. Um, so let's see it in action. What this script does is it creates the web views that I want. There we go, they're all in the temp folder, they've all just been created. And then this script will call one web view after the other. These are all um, custom triggers in this example, but you could easily have, instead of a custom trigger, you could have a script that in that script is the curl command to bring down the latest version of Citrix receiver or, or, or whatever you want to install. Cool, so the user chooses this one and this one. And so on the fly, it's creating the web views it needs and then giving us a, um, unsuccessful results for all of them which is a good thing because Creative Cloud would take ages to install. It would be a terrible demo. Um, and then at this point, um, I've uh, started with, with, uh, with the Seek workflow, doing a uh, updating all your Apple software sort of web view. So you would just make sure that the user is getting the most um, up-to-date version of the OS. And then... Uh, obligatory reboot at the end. So just a, a summary of, of what that DEP splash screen could look like using Trigger. The script just echoes out the contents of the HTML files. Then the script calls Trigger and then does something with the results of, of the um, form pass. And so then all you really need to do is um, have a policy maybe uh, that's triggered by enrollment complete in the, in the case if you were using Jamf Pro uh, that would install the trigger package and then run the two scripts one after the other. So thank you very much. I think we're good on time. Um, so you can uh, go ahead and download this today. Finally made it available. So tanyacomputer.com slash trigger. Uh, please let me know. This was sort of done with just uh, my requirements and, and my work environment in mind. Um, but I'm super keen to know if there are any other features that people um, think would, would uh, you know, benefit um, trigger and if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Um, firstly, I think uh, it has to be said, pretty brave to be um, mocking the demo gods by running code <laughs> live on stage. Um, 
no... Um, I didn't type it live. Yeah. I did consider yeah. that, but no, it's shaking okay. hands. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Tanya? Uh, yes, the, the output option, does it cover... Does it capture both standard out and standard error or just standard error? Uh, both. Yep. Thank you. No worries. And also, in, in terms of um, defining whether a, something was a success or failure, I don't just look at exit code. I look at the standard output and standard error um, uh, string uh, because the Jamf binary sometimes gives false negatives and false positives as well. With the form field returns, um, can you do just a text return as well? Text, sorry. Can you do text straight as in to input? Input? Yes. Yeah, definitely. I didn't include it in my demo, but the original um, intent with with that was was being able to do some some data validation for so in RMIT, what we want to know from a user is what their location is. And that f the formatting of so it needs to be like building and then number 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 dot level you know and it needs to be fairly uh, you need to be fairly strict with that because otherwise data just becomes meaningless right if people just do it in whatever way they they they, they um, feel like so the great thing with with the web view is that you can have JavaScript functions that do the data validation and so if they didn't put it in the format that I wanted them to, then it would just do the red border and then have a pop-up that sort of explained how to format their location correctly and wouldn't let them click continue until it did. And then, um, and then with the output, it would just be, yes, the, the, the value that they'd put in. And then in the script, I would do the API call to put that location in the uh, JSS record for the computer. G'day. Um, thanks for doing that. That was really excellent. I'll be playing with that for sure. Um, I'm curious about how you were running it. Um, obviously, you know, you'd be calling things like the Jamf uh, binary. You'll be running it as root. Um, how, how are you directing the actual uh, web view to a particular user session? Is, I mean, I, I, if so I'm running it as I'm a daemon or something, you know, it's it's not no, going to know what no, session. No, no, So if if you don't necessarily need to run it as as root, mm -hmm. but you do need to when you call it, you need to do sudo trigger if you're running a a jam policy binary. because okay. that's because that's required. Okay. So um, you're actually running it as the in the user session, as the user. It it, it depends. Like when you're you displaying something yeah, to the user. Yeah, yeah. But not necessarily. It can be as the user session, or it can be as root. And when you're running it as root, are you also displaying information back to the user at that time, like you're doing with the web? So Oops. it's uh, the way that I've got it set up is it would run as a JSS script. Okay, I understand. So right. it's not. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're running it as a JSS script, therefore it's being run as root. It's running as root all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you've got multiple users logged in, I mean, how are you directing that to so, a user so session? Um, I, I came across this, this issue where I wanted the splash screen to come up at first login, right, for, for, for the end user. And I found that um, relying on the enrolment complete trigger wasn't very reliable because that enrolment complete trigger will run when um, MB setup user was the user or um, it would also run halfway through, you know, you get that splash screen saying setup complete, mm -hmm. like the, the, yes. the native yep. one it would run sort of halfway and then interrupt the process. So how I'm actually running it at, at Seek is, and I've got a, I've got a policy that creates a menu bar item called Seek Setup at the top. And so at the moment, trigger's only being used by the techs and not by the end user. So there's still a bit of education and, 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 and design thinking before we put it, make it live for, for the customers. Okay. But the idea is that th this menu bar item is um, an indication that, okay, everything's good to go, you press start, and then that starts the Okay, process. so the user's actually triggering that themselves. Yes. I understand, yep. okay, yep. thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much, Tanya.